Uh, there we are. We're live. We're live. Hey, Dan Pink. Hey, Adam Grant. It's uh, it's funny to see you at your house. Uh, this is welcome to my backyard, and also and and welcome to Pink Ink. Well, you've already been in there, but Pink Ink World Headquarters is right over there. I mean, literally, if if I had the kind of reach of an NBA player, I could touch it right now. Well, for for those of you who don't know, Dan, he's a multi best selling author, Drive to Sell is Human, A Whole New Mind. Wildly popular TED speaker, former chief speechwriter for Al Gore, TV host. Thought it'd be fun to talk about writing since you've written a lot of books and speeches. What's your writing process like? My writing process. My writing process is actually quite laborious. Um, I'm a very, very slow writer. I'm a, I'm absolutely a tortoise uh, rather than a hare. And so what I do is I actually well I'll start at the very, very beginning. So, well, not the very beginning. No, we don't want to go back that far. Um, the, so I actually vet, for, so for books, I actually vet my ideas considerably, like pretty hard. And, um, and for every book, I will write a proposal first. Um, and sometimes a very long proposal. So this summer, over here at Pink Ink World Headquarters, which is my garage, I wrote two book proposals that no one will ever see. Um, and that led me to a third book proposal, which I think is really good. So I, I spent a lot of time coming with the idea, and then when I actually, then I spent a lot of time doing the research, and I do the research line by line, dime by dime. Read the studies, do the interviews. I tend to be one of those annoying interviewers who goes back to people multiple times to re-ask them questions. Uh, and then the actual writing process, is that, assuming that anybody's still here listening to this long and tortured explanation, the actual writing process, what I do is uh, I work very much like a, I like to think of it like a bricklayer. And so I will set aside, I always work in the morning, and I will set aside, I will give myself basically a quota. And I'll say each day you're going to write 500 words or 600 words or 700. It's actually a fairly small quote for you. I mean, it's a very, very small quota, but that's how, I, that's how I roll. And I will come, that's where I live, right over there. And I will come um, down those back steps into this office, shut the door, and will not do anything else until I've written those words. No email, no phone call. I'll, I'll allow myself a bathroom break, but that's about it uh, until I hit those and hit those words. Sometimes I come into the office at 8.30 and I'm done at 10 with the writing. Other times I come into that, I'm mean, not joking, I'll come into that, that office at, at 8.30 and, and it'll be, you know, 7 o'clock and my family want to have dinner and I'll say, you know what, I haven't hit my 500 words yet. Wow, so you really treat it like a job. I treat it like a job and I treat it, I treat it like manual a manual labor job because I do think that it is something like that because the thing is is that if you get your 500 words on Monday and then on Tuesday and then on Wednesday and then on Thursday and every single day suddenly you have a brick in the wall where, where do you Which draw the Pink line? Pink Floyd not Daniel Pink but. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious about okay so you're at 487 can you write gibberish to finish up um, no you can't I'm gonna press this button right here can you write gibberish? You can, but uh, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Seriously, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't do that. I now I'm going to having read originals. I am going to stop mid sentence. Ooh. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. And then come back and 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 do and, you know so I have something to go from. But no, um, I will you know. Um, but, but it's interesting you asked that. Would you write gibberish? Because you don't even consider well if you have 497, would you stop? Because you know the answer is no. No, you can't. No, you have to, you absolutely have to not. How do you Ab determine the quota, though? How did you just come at 500 as your target? Uh, I try to do something that is depends on where I am in the process. So if I'm a little bit behind in in sort of production, I will, you know, like the foreman, I will dial up my dial up my t my my quote a little bit. You know, hammer people a little bit more. Um, you realize though that you're you're your own employee. I know, I know, I know, I know. Not well, this fun. is the great thing. This is the great thing about. Um, it's like it's that great line about being self-employed, and, and the, the millions of Facebook viewers out there watching right now who are self-employed can appreciate this. So the great part about being um, self-employed is that um, uh, is that you have you for a boss. The bad part is that you have you for an employee. Um, <laughs> anyway, I so so I sort of depend. I, I want something that's like not too easy and not too not too tough. So it, and it'll, it sort of depends on where I am in a chapter, where I am in the whole process of, of writing it. Um, but I want it to be uh, uh, fairly doable, um, and I do a lot of um, I do a lot of re uh, rewriting, a lot of rewriting. I do probably eight or nine drafts of every chapter. So, going back, starting over from scratch after you've written, or just editing? 
uh, everyone, uh, very rarely will go back entirely from scratch, but I will rip out entire sections. I will I often find myself writing the right things in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go back and do that. And it will do very, very heavy, uh, very, very heavy edits. And uh, I also do this thing. This is very therapeutic to talk about this. Oh, that, that's why we're here. Yeah, actually. Um, so it, it's interesting. You have this uh, this sort of Gilbert Brim idea of like a just manageable difficulty. Yeah. Where you you shoot for something that's a challenge but not impossible. Right. But it sounds like from the two book proposals you wrote over the summer that no one will ever see, that sometimes that doesn't go as planned. What what were those about? Why did you kill them? How did you know that they weren't? Ready for the light of day. I don't know if so. I want to say what they're what they're about, but um, tell us what they weren't about then. Um, they weren't about um, answering questions you don't want to answer live in front of. Now it looks like, according to these, the data coming up here, tens of millions of people watching live. Uh, oh, we got a, we got the wind, a gust of wind here in Washington D.C. And I mean that literally, not metaphorically. And uh, but it just wobbled the camera a little bit. Anyway. Uh, how did I know? Um, good question. Very, very good question. Um, a couple of things. Number one, uh, there are certain things every once in a while in writing. I, I had this experience, there's certain, and, and I guess it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visceral judgment. It's not anything. I mean, maybe AI can begin to turn into an algorithm, but, but for me, it's very visceral. Uh, every once in a while, you, get, you start working on something, and it is too hard to make it good. And the reason it's too hard to make it good is that it doesn't work. You know, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like you're, you're trying to build a house on a certain uh, piece of land, and it's like, well, this house doesn't support the, you know, like this is sand, and it doesn't support the house. And no matter how hard you try, you can get the finest architect, the finest builder, you're still building a house in the wrong place, and it's not gonna stand up. And that's just a complete gut call. That, that was one of them. That, that's a big part of it. Um, that was really the, you know that, and I've done that before. I once, years ago, um, sent my wife and our kids away around Christmas break. Sent them to where my in-laws live. Invited, not sent. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were invited, but I said, "You guys go. I'm going to stick back. I got to buckle down. I'm going to write this book proposal." And about ten days later, I called my wife Jessica, um, and said, "Got some good news and some bad news. Good news, you can come back. Bad news." Uh, the reason you come back is that I realize this is not a book. And I've never, and, and the times that I pulled the plug on that, I've, I've actually truly never regretted it. I think it was the right call each time. Do you come back to it though? Does it become an article? Yeah, I, sometimes. I, I would hate the feeling of having written something that went nowhere completely. That doesn't bother you? Oh, it, 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 it bothers me deeply. But what bothers me deeply is publishing bad stuff more deeply. More so. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You know, it's like pick your, you know, which one do you, you know, it's like, a, you know, Pick, I was going to say it's like Trump or Cruz. Who do you want? No, but um, the um, um, yeah. Uh, but what you have though is you have, you know, pieces of it mm -hmm. could end up being useful in other things. And actually, in that one case that I just gave you, a piece of it actually was one of the building blocks for a whole new mind. Yeah. Wow. So there's a, a diamond in the rough. Sort of. Yeah. 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 But it's partly just you know my own laborious way of just working things out. Worst advice you've ever been given as a writer? Um, when I was a, a uh, the worst advice I've ever been given as a writer is really, can I go back to writing speeches? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are no rules here. Yeah. This is your house. Um, it looks like we're in California, doesn't it? Almost. I mean, with that sun dappled skies and that giant tree there we're Keep not deluding yourself we're in um and i have like my um stanford shirt on so i mean we could totally fake we're here in palo alto rather than here in the boring streets of northwest washington uh worst advice that i've ever been given uh really had to do with the idea that um uh that you can um kind of like sort of prettify something that you can perfume it you know what i mean uh so you can say um you know it's pretty good it just needs to be snazzier you know, you know what I mean? As if, as if there's this uh, divide between style and substance, which I don't believe. I don't believe there's a, I, I believe that style and substance are integrally, integrally linked. And it's not as if you have something that's substantive and, oh, I'm going to apply style onto it in the way that I would um, um, in, uh, a coat of paint. Um, I, I think they're integrally linked. And it's usually people who um, 
don't know anything about writing. So it'll be like, I'll write a speech circulated. This is, you know, a long time ago. I'll write a speech circulated and um, someone will say, oh, it's good. It just needs a little more pop. Or it just, can you add some, I mean, literally people, literally people said this to me. Not my boss bosses, but like staff people. Um, so can you add some, it needs a little more rhetoric. As if the words you put on the page were not rhetoric? Yeah, or as if I had like a little spice rack in my office. They're like, oh, <laughs> oh, it needs some, it, you know, it needs some turmeric too. I mean, it was just ridiculous. So that's the, that's the, the best, you want the best advice? I do now. Okay. <laughs> the best advice I ever got uh, was advice I got from a magazine editor. And I had uh, submitted a first draft and it was off. Okay, maybe a 4,000, 5,000 word piece. And he said, and he knew it, and he was a kind person. And I knew it was off, but I wasn't sure why it was off. Mm -hmm. And so rather than going through kind of editing it, sort of, he said, listen, here's what I need you to think about. He said, what promise are you making to the reader? What promise are you making to the reader? And that was like one of those few moments in my life when it was sort of like the heavens parted and it was like, bah! Um, you heard the music? I did, and it was like, oh wow, this is actually a pretty good question to ask because I, here I am writing 4,000 words or 5,000 words, and you know, I'm asking the reader to say, oh, no matter what you're doing in your life, just stop, please stop, spend however long it takes, 20 minutes, half an hour, with me, because it's more important than anything else you're doing, more important than doing your work, more important than exercising, more important than spending time with your family, just spend that time with me and it'll be a better use of your time. And that you're like, whoa, wait a second. I'm actually making the promise that that's the case. I better deliver on that promise. And what promise am I making? And so every once in a while when I get stuck, I think of that. Like, what's the promise you're making to the reader? Um, and I think that all of us who have the privilege to write obviously depend on, on readers, and they're giving us this incredible, I mean, I don't want to get all gooey here, but they're giving us this kind of pretty incredible gift. And so, you know, you don't want to blow that. Love it. Dan, it's, uh, it's great to have a chance to chat with you live. It's, it's good to be chatting live. Thank you. Yeah, beneath the sun-dappled skies of Washington, D.C. On, on a set that looks, it's not a set, it's my backyard, but my backyard suddenly looks like it's Palo Alto. We'll, uh, we'll try to do this more often. Thank uh, you. You're welcome anytime. Can we show a shot of the, of the garage? Let's try it out. There it is. That's my garage. And that's inside there is where it all happens. If you can see kind of... See that? It's just an old garage that we that we redid, and um, that's where it all happens. And this is, you know, this is this is these are the back steps. I hope you can see that the back steps down which I walk in order to get to set office. <laughs> this is what uh, what happens when you bring a, a former TV host uh, to Facebook Live. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thanks to the millions of people out there watching.